Hey kids, do you like professional wrestling? Well, we like professional wrestling too. This is Shake Them Ropes. This is your first time listening because it's been a busy week in wrestling and people may be looking for audio. You've stumbled upon what is probably the only semi-positive show about WWE on the network. We also cover AEW at the same time. We were kind of the stateside staple. What what are you laughing at? I I like that we are bracing for impact and critique right out the shoot today uh, uh no 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 i i think we all know where this is going uh if you've been listening to the show but for those of you who have not welcome aboard welcome aboard. Uh, th- th- this is gonna be a little bit different than what you've been listening to in your wrestling audio feed this week probably probably i mean we're we're, we're light on the news we're heavy on the snark We've been doing this for a decade plus, so I mean, you know, we're 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 the show that covers American wrestling usually. Some I used it. to close caption WWE again if we're just initiating people for first time yeah. listeners. Uh, yeah, and I've uh, I'm a I used to be over on Fightful uh, doing their after shows, and uh, I write, and I used to act, and I used to do a lot of other things. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> it's nice uh, to finally legally be able to just be like, yeah, I used to close caption them. That's my my gravitas. When, when, when I when, for when years I, I was just on the network going like, yes, I like wrestling. And not really kind of like well, really well, tipping I always the love hands. saying because because we were saying you know we we primarily concentrate on stateside wrestling and that was true when WWE was the only real game in town and then someone will always go do you do Impact I go no go listen to Mike and JD they do they do Impact because they were originally an Impact show so it's like one of those things where it's like mostly AEW WWE if something tickles my fancy I'll go there or Chris saw something but. uh yeah, so main story. WrestleMania was a success by any metric of of either critical or commercial. I don't care. If if you're the kind of person who hates WWE so much that your reaction is to yell sex trafficking on the internet about WWE, we may not be your show, and that's fine. I, you know, I, I think we've been pretty critical about all we've that been critical too. Of that, yeah, yeah, like, just, it's not like we didn't I, go in pretty hard on the, uh, the deposition. No, we did, but it's like or whatever it was. Uh, the here's, here's the other explanation: is I am knee deep in Twitter and internet discourse, and Chris just says I'm not dealing with that crap. Yeah, I got rid and, of my Twitter. It was good. And and the reactions to to the effusive or I don't know if effusive is the right word there. There was a large amount of praise for this WrestleMania weekend by, 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 uh, by people who watched it and people who liked it. And people were like, man, that was really good. That was really good. That was really good. But you know, then come the people who just can't say anything good. So it's like, Oh, so you support a company that supports sex trafficking. Do you? I'm like, this is not the appropriate time for that it's just I, I get your bitterness i get it you're pretty too over there aew pat you on the head there i, I mean you i bit. thought there's nothing wrong with hiring rick flair in 2024 <laughs> or matt or, or jeff hardy i mean these these are not problematic individuals so i you know it's oh, it's like you. i get it i get where they're coming from on this oh yeah well we didn't like that either Okay. Okay. Then like who do, to what do you like? Did you like it, it enough to it, quit? No. Tell you, yeah. All right. You know, it's one of those types of things where I just went, all right, look, we're all hypocrites in some way because this is a dirty, scummy business that we watch. There's, there are no winners here, as Nick Bakai I, used to say. It's a I, I guess that's. I, I guess that's what makes the show different a little bit is like. We don't watch one of these two products, uh, the two dominant ones, AEW, WWE, and think, ah, one of these guys is the angel and one of these guys is the devil. And one of these guys is making good wrestling and the other one, ipso facto, by virtue of not being the other guy, is making bad wrestling. Yes, we call it balls and strikes, I think. Um, although we, we do have our biases, but uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get to learn those as we go along. I like calling foul. <laughs> especially towards you. Yes. Oh, you'll have plenty of opportunity. Probably uh, the WWE announced total gate for WrestleMania up 78% from last year. Dave's words, which is quite amazing. Dave Meltzer of the wrestling observer, but with the nature of how pricing is done, it showed how much heavier the demand was. 
Last year's number between the two shows was $19,749,071, and that increase would come out to roughly $35,153,346. Those are about $17.57 million each night. Peacock viewership up 41% over last year. Chris, this, this was a... This was a f- good weekend for them, all things considered. Business people were, wise, people were riding on the peacock. Got to like it, and uh, I mean, if you're NBC, you've got to like that too. WWE clearly a draw to getting people to sub up for something uh, in a landscape that is populated with a lot of different subscription networks right now. That's good for WWE as well, frankly. Uh, you know, and AEW would love to be in a position like that where you have a bunch of different sub networks looking at, you know, your numbers recently and going, wow, you guys can be a needle mover in terms of subscriptions in, in a very competitive market like that. That's a good thing. Yeah. And now they have two of those with the NFL as well. And also I would, I would say the, uh, the premier league, premier league's probably big for, I think premier league's on NBC. Am I right on that? Yeah, I am. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> not, not a fan of the footy. <laughs> Oh, that's um, soccer, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That's soccer. Um, we'll we'll talk about the matches when we get into the lazy river. Um, other news: uh, the the WWE draft is coming back right around the same time as the NFL draft, which kind of uh, tracks. Will start in on uh, April twenty sixth in Cincinnati, and will also be on April 29th in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, lots of hinting. Basically, hey, we just had our big event. Now we're going to rescramble all the uh, all the rosters. I I'm keeping an open mind on this, especially with the post McMahon era. I think this is a really awesome opportunity for the writers to be able to really reset the roster and start writing the storylines and things that they want to do. Uh, if WrestleMania 40 was the start of the Paul Levesque era, as is being oh, moved by Lord. the company, uh, then this draft, I think is going to be the opening salvo for a lot of new storylines and a lot of new character development inside of the company leading into our next WrestleMania. All right, it's time for me to take a bit of a shot at WWE. I liked WrestleMania weekend. I thought it was very fun, very entertaining. I can't even get past this being a new era, a Renaissance era, or the Paul Levesque era. We don't need a thank you, Triple H, or thank you, Hunter, chance you don't need to simp you don't need to simp can we stop it like it it looks bad (laughs) it looked bad when vince did it i think everyone who listens to the show would agree with that you know what if you get anything from the show we are anti-corporate fealty oh yeah (laughs) especially when it's like using your own show to praise you like like it's like getting a thank you that's their job that is your job is to give us wrestling content mr wrestling corporation i am not going to thank you for doing your job thank you for entertaining us could you imagine like the cast of a show just coming out after an above average show and, and getting praise from the audience. Like, thank you, Buffy, or I don't even know what. Uh, you get a standing I, ovation I for community no. theater or something. I don't it, know. It, well, yeah, I mean, but that's like after a theater performance. Okay, that's true. Yeah, 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 but like, that's like, you know what it's like? It's like not bringing out the cast to take a final bow, but instead bringing out the empresario of the opera to like come out and take the bow. It's like, you know, wait, if, you, right. if you drive a Lexus, you don't pass a Lexus dealership, stop your car and start chanting. Thank, Thank you, you Lexus. Lexus. Yeah. You don't do that. And so it's just, <laughs> although now I kind of want to, <laughs> I, every time I pass a super dealership now, I'm going to go like, Thank you. Super roof dude, dude, hawk my horn. And, and they'll ju- and they'll just look at you weird. Like, um, like, I'm loving this impressive though, guys loving yeah. it. Uh, it's, it's going to be a, a, a short n- news thing. Cause there's so much lazy river and so much content from this past weekend to get through. Oh, uh, do, do, you want, do you want banter then? Or, or are we, are oh, no, no, no. We got a lot to talk about. Okay. So I'm just trying to get through all this. Uh, Aki Bono, who was part of WrestleMania 21 against the big show passing away. And then in terms of talent deals, Brian Cage announced he has quote unquote signed a, or he has, he has signed a quote unquote long term deal with AEW and that his agent was negotiating between both AEW and WWE. 
I, I have my thoughts on that. And then uh, Matt Hardy's deal with AEW has run out, so he can go crying back to Vince saying, "Hey, one last run for me and my brother." Because uh, well, no, he can't go crying back to Vince. What? Oh, that's right. Vince, and that's not actually an option that he oh, that's, has. That's available actually to correct. Him. Yeah. Hey, you know, you know. <laughs> that would actually be very funny that if Matt doesn't realize what's going on in the news, it calls up Vince anyways. It asks for a final run for him and Jeff. So, uh, you know, I have my doubts on the, on the Matt Hardy one because he had a new deal in front of him and then he didn't sign it, which I think is kind of ballsy given age and wear and tear and the fact that he's moving in slow motion. But I think everybody kind of thought there'd be at least one last Hardys versus Christian and Adam Copeland match. I don't think we're getting that. I think they're going to run back to WWE at their first chance if they can as a team for quote unquote one last run. And then that one last run won't be satisfying enough. So they'll try. Yeah, but we can AEW. finally get the Karrion Cross and Jeff Hardy rematch that we've all been itching for. <laughs> well, if Jeff Hardy goes to NXT, maybe. Possibly. <laughs> I, you know, because the final would, testament, we're down there now. I think they may be staying there for this uh, for this draft. But who okay, knows? so we know about Jeff's problems. He might actually need a refresher course on where the hard camera is. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'll do it for for hard news because we're just gonna go through like a lot of the matches over the weekend, and then and, and then of course AE Dynamite, AEW Dynamite, which was that uh, this is baffling in so many ways. Um, Although Raw after after Mania did two two point three million average, which is a monster number for them. Things are hot in the company. I would say that Stand and Deliver night one and night two of WrestleMania all were very good. I, I won't say they were great or outstanding. Although out of all three of them, night two of WrestleMania was. If I could combine night one of last year's WrestleMania, night two of this year's WrestleMania, I'd have a super show that I'd, I'd have as comfort food every time I wanted to turn on a pay-per-view. Um, I'll, so I'll start our Lazy River of Wrestling uh, criticism, whatever we watched, where we saw, and we saw a lot this week. Uh, I will start with this, uh, Chris. What was your, not the best, but what was your favorite match of the weekend? I will just say, like, it's tricky because I'm, I'm trying to just see if there's anything that I liked more. You know what it was? It was Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. In, in particular, the, the entire fin- – like, one, the match was very good. Two, the segment afterwards with McIntyre and Punk – was absolutely delightful yeah and really 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 solid and complete storytelling um like very layered and satisfying drew mcintyre finally gets his big world championship win in front of a crowd of people he gets to do it in front of his wife but it's this monkey's paw thing for him because he just can't let go this feud with cm punk and so that does end up like the obvious sort of checkoffs gun here is that Punk being out there cost him the match with Seth, thus costing him the world championship. This okay. was so much more clever, where it's the fact that McIntyre elected to go over to CM Punk, yes, and antagonize and push the buttons and push the buttons and push the buttons. And because of that, that ended up biting him in the ass. Like, yeah, of course, Punk was responsible for his part, but it's it's that move that bit him in the ass. <laughs> I just found it so narratively satisfying. I love Drew McIntyre. I'm, I'm laughing Drew. over the phrase CM Punk was obviously responsible for his part because that seemed to carry all week. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> no, well, I, I, perhaps, Jeff, I phrased some of this in a way that okay, that's uh, sets things up for our discussion of later story, too, because, no, I, I actually think that there are interesting sort of literary-ish parallels between the McIntyre and Punk interaction and how AEW chose to re-engage with CM Punk and how that played out for both of them, in my opinion. Um, but yes, in, in this storyline, I just thought it was really great. Uh, Priest ends up winning the title. They have a great match, really great post-match interaction. Uh, I found that to be a very solid piece of business. I think my favorite match um, was probably Sammy and Gunther. 
Oh, it was a good match. It was a good match. I mean, and and that that my friends is the time to pull out a big move you haven't used since coming over to WWE where it was outlawed. When he pulled the brain buster out, I I I I marked like a kid. I don't know. I mean, I hadn't seen that in years, and I've I'd seen that live at uh, at uh, PWG shows and stuff like that. So I mean, that was that was pretty awesome. Um. We'll just we'll start with a stand and deliver, and I'll just read through the results and give a couple of quick hits, and then anything that stood out to you. Joe Gacy beat Sean Spears. Eh. Baron surprising. Corbin. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Well, I, I mean, I was just, it's just surprising because it's like I don't know what they're doing with Gacy, and it seemed like Spears was the guy that they're building all this story around with Rich Holland and everything. So I don't know. It's strange. No, I agree. Uh, Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker beating Axiom and Nathan Frazier. I thought the match. Tuesday was a little bit better. It seemed like Frazier was kind of rushing things a bit, but I still really loved this match quite a bit. Um, yeah, these two, it, these it's two one teams of these get, things. These two teams just gel for me. I don't know about you. I, I agree. I think both teams have good chemistry amongst themselves and with each other as, as like, you know, competitors too. Um, look, uh, Frazier and Axiom have good backstage chemistry and obviously the wolf dogs do uh it, you know it's hard not to enjoy the like bro friendship of baron corbin and braun breaker where like neither one of them wants to really admit that they like each other rumor is they may be keeping them uh together um uh, on the main roster for a little bit Just, i don't think it's a bad idea i i i i don't think it's a bad idea i mean even if they start demobilizing them as a tag team. I would just keep them together as friends. I, I think I think Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker sort of bring out really good personality qualities in both of them. And obviously the goal here is going to be to push Breaker because he's awesome. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think Corbin there is like the mentor and then maybe, have him, you know, eventually have him turn on. But like there's no, to me, there's no money in Baron Corbin versus Braun Breaker. So I wouldn't like, turn Corbin on breaker. I know, but they will eventually. And yeah, you, you know that cause that's how they build everybody. That's and, how and, they, and, and, and that's Hunter's how they historically still, have built stuff. We'll see. We'll see. No, I, I still think Hunter has the WWE system in him. So it's one of those things where I think that's the play they're going to do. Oba Femi beating Dijak and Briggs. Hoss fight. Briggs has a couple of broken ribs from that thing. Uh, this was just, uh, <laughs> This was Dijek fighting for his life almost literally against these other two who were just a little uh a little geeked to be on a uh, on a pay-per-view, I would say. Um, yeah, Femi Femi's very green. Um and when it, it, there's like a little bit of like the old school, like early Van Vader thing where like he used to just hit people way too hard. Yes. Uh yeah, and Femi does that. Uh Briggs Briggs has been trying to show something. So, like, there's a little bit more of that, too. And I think he had that, like, big show, like, nerves yes. thing going on. Um, and, yeah, the, the result I'll do is... things I don't quite know how to do, but it's a big show. So, let's just I, go that, for right, it. Right, yeah. I, I, right. These are things that maybe I pull off 66% of the time in practice. I'm going to give it a shot because that's better than 50-50. <laughs> yes. That's better than 50-50. <laughs> like, nah, it's, that's not where you want to be. That's perfect. Uh the six woman tag Fallon Henley, Kalani, Jordan, Thea Hale beat Izzy Dame, JC Jane, and Kiana James. I thought this uh this this over delivered because I had very low expectations. Um JC, Kiana, Fallon were were, you know, they're solid. Kalani is Izzy. is learning. Uh, uh. Thea is decent. Izzy Izzy wasn't bad. Um she she's gonna be once once she learns how to play monster, kind of. Cause I think that's her role. I, th I think she's going to be fine, but I mean, th this did not, this, I mean, th this didn't suck. Let's put it that way. I, I, you know, Thea Hale wins with, uh, with her arm bar that she learned. And I thought, I thought that went a, a decent way. It, 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 let's put it this way. It did not offend me. I thought, I thought the mistake here was putting the two women's matches back to back. I still think it's very funny that Thea Hale has this like one lingering piece of characterization from her like two week interaction with the uh, no quarter catch crew where she picked up the arm bar. <laughs> yes, that is. Uh, speaking of no quarter catch crew, uh, Drew Gulak taking off the branding for now. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, not appearing on this show. Drew Gulak. They're investigating his handshakes as we talked about uh, last uh, week. Yeah, you know, 
uh, especially in the in the light of that, um, you know, I, I I pulled out the scales on the show last week, and now the scales are tilting more towards. Gulak was doing something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He was doing something. Uh, it, it, the tweet was bad. Him not being on the show this week. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, I I thought Rousey not being able to recall the name sort of belied a certain thing, but nah. I, I'm now the other way completely. Yeah, I'm kind of new, that way. New facts. Yeah, new facts have changed my mind. Roxanne Perez defeated Lyra Valkyria by submission for the NXT Women's Championship. I don't know. Are we gonna get into? Are we gonna get into NXT maybe after we do the 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 Mania stuff? Because I kind of want to talk about that match with Natty. But uh, this was this started slow, but I think the the last third really picked up and it really got there eventually. It was just one of those things where it just it, it started weird, and it, it it it's a little bit of Lyra how she works is kind of almost. Uh, I'm going to punch, but I'm going to let you know I'm punching and then I'll punch you type of thing. So there's a little bit of hesitation on her moves at times. It gets weird. I still don't understand Roxanne Perez as a heel. I I don't like it, but I get it. Yeah. She's Perez has a much better, let's call it a wrestling cadence as a heel. Yes. No, then yes. Valkyria's baby face cadence, which I also kind of latched onto as weird. Like you sort of nailed it. It's like there's this herky jerk big telegraph thing that, like, of course, wrestling has like some telegraph, Drew McIntyre counting down, you know, the Claymore kick, that sort of thing. But like, it's like that with everything, where like the 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 arm like double pumps and like double clutches. Yes. And her offense, her offense feels um, without direction. Yes. Uh, that there's not there's not a pur- purpose like, like it's not purposeful offense and and you know well I don't love Perez as a heel one thing I will say about her as a heel is I felt there was a lot more purpose to her offense heels have a lot more of that going in their natural advantage um, but I still think a baby face needs to have some sort of game plan that's of like makes sense uh, that we can see at home and then that gets disrupted by the heel Ilya Dragunov beat Tony D'Angelo Meh. This was the story match that they're trying to tell where he's the honorable dirt bag. I love Ilya. I hated this angle. Um, Ilya I didn't was like also, this angle either. I, 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 it, Ilya was also fantastic, I thought, on NXT this week. Um, but this, this match was freaking stupid because Tony D'Angelo has been willing to throw Ilya Dragunov in a trunk after using Crucifino and Stax to kidnap him. He has been willing to send out Stax in a kamikaze mission, essentially, to go and injure Ilya Dragunov leading into this match. He has been dishonorable throughout the campaign to try to defeat Ilya Dragunov, and it's like... In the final match, he has this crisis of conscience, and it's completely unearned. It's not like Ilya Dragunov got in his head in the lead-up promo. It's like, what type of leader do you want to be, Tony? What, how do you see, like, which would have been a terrible yeah. promo, by the way. It wouldn't have been good. But, like, it, at least something where Ilya Dragunov rattles Tony D'Angelo in some way would have made some sense. In this case, they even went after his hand. They injured his hand leading into this. Uh, I thought, uh, though I would not have been a huge fan of it, I thought the clear story that needed to happen here was Tony D'Angelo cheats, and maybe he wins the title because of it. Um, but like the 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 Tony D'Angelo family did way too many heel things on the way to this. To, to have to this not have moral redemption arc. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I would agree it was with completely that. It was unearned. unearned. Um, and then Trick Williams defeated Carmelo Hayes. I, this kind of under-delivered for me. Yeah, it was It here. really did. It was there and to the point where I'm now a bit, because we can go now go to the follow-up on NXT if you want. I think that's sure. a good way to do this. Um, We're just going back to it pretty much. Is Oh, is, God, I hated have, the finish we, NXT. We now have Hayes, Williams, and Dragunov in kind of a weird triangle. I think they're not quite sure who they're bringing up, but I think they may end up bringing all three of them up eventually. We had Ilya show up on Raw. 
uh, beating Nakamura, and that's actually going to be my surprise call for the draft. I think Nakamura goes to NXT to help Julia uh, with English and acclimate to the United States. I think that might happen there. Um, oh, and maybe they bring him down to have a program with Dragunov. Yes. Uh, like that would actually be a fantastic takeover sort of program for them to you know do as a one-off or even a two-off sort of thing quick feud right and the program they're going to be doing is is they're saying okay Ilya and trick uh if trick loses against Ilya, he he leaves nxt and and i think trick's leaving and because i think the the telegraph's already here kamala hayes cost trick williams the match next week trick doesn't win the title uh, and oh, the- I think he gets him DQ'd. I think it's even yeah. better. I think Carmelo yeah. comes in and starts attacking Ilya, and that makes Trick lose. So he's gone. Yep. And I think I think I think the I think the payoff is Melo and 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 Ilya Dragunov. have one last match, and Ilya sends Melo packing. Yeah. So Melo gets drafted, thinks he's in the clear, and then all of a sudden Trick gets drafted to the same show, and then it's like, oh no. <laughs> kind but of I, I actually think he needs to stop being a heel. I don't think heel mellow really works. I I agree. I think cocky heel mellow works. And I you know I I put out there that maybe maybe you just retcon this and you bring up mellow and trick as a team. Yeah. Because they, they need to work it out. A, yeah, he's and Mello's already lost on SmackDown and he's been seen a couple times losing on SmackDown. They that might be a look. We get that NXT is terrible. Well, what about all the character work they did? Look, in the Vince I think, era, I think they forgot all do, about it. You can, I don't think you have to forget about it. I think they okay. can have a backstage segment where they decide. I think I think basically my sort of vision of this is Dragunov sends them both packing, and it's when Dragunov sends them both packing that they finally realize, okay, we need to have a talk. Like, let's finally sit down and hash this shit out. Uh, you know. Yeah, um, and and just the, another note on NXT. Uh, I that was the best Natty I've seen in a while against Roxanne Perez. I thought that was a really strong match on that one. I, I she Natty can bring it out sometimes, and and when she's allowed to be a little bit more serious, um, just the chops to the chest and the belly, and you could just see Roxanne was not having a fun <laughs> time taking them. Uh, uh, no, I I enjoyed I enjoyed that for what it was too. I just hate that all of this is happening at the expense of Lola Vice. Like Lola Vice is so lost in, in this like booking and stuff. Her part is terrible on this, and really, what they should do is no offense to Electra Lopez, but Lola Vice is probably a better replacement now. But she's nowhere near ready to go to the main roster. Electra Lopez shouldn't be on the main roster. I'm not the biggest fan of Zelina Vega, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it it's very weird and 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 just I, yeah, the Lola Vice involvement in this story is isn't didn't do much for me. When did you turn against Zelina Vega? I thought Zelina and Andrade were always sort of a money combo. Well, they they're a money combo, but right now Zelina's not with him. Yeah, but so, I mean, she's I mean, not, she's it, not it bad. Was a, yeah, yeah. No, it was a fun act when she was a second, but then she became a wrestler on the main roster. Hey, and that's when I turned on her. Oh yeah, no, no, she's too. She she doesn't work as a heel wrestler. No, she does not. It's 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 very odd. But uh, you know, the occasional Hurricanrana, sure, I can do. Yeah, that. yeah, no, as a heel manager, she can do all those high flying moves, and it makes sense because she's on the outside. And she's always going to take advantage of people who are beaten down. Um, but as 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 an actual heel wrestler, it's weird. She's so small. Quick respite in between. I did watch, uh, if you get a chance, find Paul Heyman's unedited Hall of Fame speech. It's one of the most hilariously profane performances by a thing. Did did you get uh, access to it at all? I I have not, no. Okay, no. uh, F-bombs. He puts on the... uh, puts on the duster and the ball cap and cuts an ECW one night stand style promo. Um, Lots of funny anecdotes, uh, lots and lots of praise for the, again, Paul Levesque era and, 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 you know, how he is a Paul Levesque guy now Um, kind of uh, (laughs) it it was, it was surreal in in more, in more than one way. And 
and yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll go by, go through WrestleMania now. Night one, obviously, it was a little colder than night two, um, in terms of temperature, uh, and I think it affected a lot of people's performances. To be honest with you, especially in the opening match, uh, I thought night one was a little flat. To be honest with you, well, the- I, I liked uh, the the cold really affected. I think it was McAfee who didn't have good cold gear, and Michael Cole did. I enjoyed that. I, I love that they keep mentioning the cold on the broadcast because to me, I mean, everybody's like, man, I wish they'd stop complaining about that. That's where WWE booked it. No, that's where Vince booked it. It was Vince's idea to have a two day thing after doing the debacle in New York when it was, uh, when they almost had snow for that WrestleMania. Now we're doing two nights in Philly in early April and it's freezing out there. And to me, every time they said, they did a temperature update. I thought that was a shot at Vince. It's like, thanks, Vince, for sticking us in this cold, <laughs> cold stadium. Yeah, I didn't I didn't ever hear it as a brag. I always heard it as a this is actually just kind of brutal. And like they, I mean, even they they had dis- discussions about how it might affect in ring performances and stuff. Too. Yeah, but some people yeah. are saying there's there's heaters in the pole posts and stuff like that. I go, I don't. What think is so. that going to do when you're out there in spandex in, in your underwear? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, uh, I, yeah that's tough. I, also, all those bumps hurt more because it's cold. Yes, uh, re- and and speaking of being uh, being cold, uh, Rhea Ripley defeated Becky Lynch by pinfall. Lynch fighting off strep and a fever allegedly according to the uh kind of thing i this uh this was fine it just didn't hit the peak that i wanted it to it was a becky lynch match and i i think becky lynch doesn't necessarily get heated in her thing she's a star and everything uh it made real Rhea look like a million bucks i thought she was very good in it it was just one of those things where it's like i thought i was expecting a little bit more of a match i thought i was expecting a little bit more of believing that Becky may overcome Rhea, but I never really got into that. I, I never bought in at, at any point in this program that Becky was going to win. They didn't do a very good job sort of making the case for why you'd want her to beat Rhea. Um, what is the Becky future that we were all supposed to be imagining? So it sort of made the match a foregone conclusion match for me which whenever we have one of those, they tend to grade harder there, there they have to really sort of like work their asses off and just really deliver something. Even though I know where we're going, this just didn't get there for me. Six pack ladder match for the tag team titles, the various ones, uh, Austin theory and Grayson Waller getting the uh, SmackDown titles, a rather anticlimactic moment. And then awesome truth as I kind of opined last week. Yep. They got the raw ones. Um, and exciting for our truth to get his WrestleMania moment. And there was some, no, I, no, straight up. Like you could tell no, it really I'm, I'm la- it meant I'm something to at, him. I'm laughing at the raw follow-up where they just go right back to him thinking he's part of the freaking judgment day. It's he like- is, he is, <laughs> he defeated Jordan Devlin. They had a match, Jeff. The match had consequences. One of those consequences is that, Jordan Devlin is not actually an official member of the Judgment Day. He's just buds. And our truth is a member of the Judgment Day. They just don't like hanging out with him. It's it's honestly kind of sad. A lot of, cra- you know, the usual crazy tag team ladder stuff, putting people's backs in peril. Uh, Dunn and Bate and uh, Gargano and Ciampa doing most of the quote-unquote work. If you I always I those. always love it that the losing teams are the ones who end up killing themselves for these matches. It yes. hardly seems fair. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like the whole thing where it's like once you get off injury, they put you in money in the bank or something to prove that you're healed. <laughs> like Sin Cara so, and Sheamus and Luke Harper and you Paul. have Theory and Waller right there who are two young hateable heels. Why are they not getting most of this? Oh well, Grayson did, and I mean, but Grayson's also t- took that horrible thing in the ladder match in NXT too. So it's like one of those things where it's like he's just willing to do all that. Um. I did dig the Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, Rocky, and Apollo Creed gear. Always, always nice. Lots I thought of- all of the Philly tributes were actually a lot of fun. Uh, There's too everything many Eagles for- tributes for me. Okay, that. But I'm talking like you know, like the Sami Zayn storyline being a tribute yes. to Rocky. Like, yes. like I, I thought they actually had a lot of like clever little tribute things going on in this show that made this a very Philly show. Uh, Ray Mysterio and Andrade 
with the LWO beat Santos Escobar and Dirty Dominic Mysterio with uh, Angel Berto and Electra Lopez. Why? Party, party match. I don't understand why they 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 this finish was, but uh, hey, uh, Joaquin Wild got his got to do his catapult spot. Looked just as impressive as you thought. Um, I, I agree. I don't understand. <laughs> I, 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 why don't you let the heels win here? No, Dom should always beat his dad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like, like that should be the story. Like, and he should cheat to do it at every times. single t- no, and every single time it's like, and, and, and that's sort of like the running joke. Like, Dom's a shit wrestler, and Ray's a legendary one. Yeah. And, but, but for whatever reason, he always beats his dad every single time. I think that that should have been the story. I. Breaking that streak was criminal to me. Jay Uso beat Jimmy Uso by pinfall. Um, this, this stunk. It stunk, but the best thing I can say is they learned from this mistake in the in the Bailey EO match, where they tried to do the melodrama there, and Bailey just or EO just punched her in the face right after doing it. Yeah, this this was this was an idea that should have been shot down. The the oh. melodrama story. Oh. They were having a decent little match yeah. up until then. Uh, the Spears looked good. But uh, th- once we got into the Shawn Michaels Theater, uh, it, that's it a was... Good, that's a good terminology for it right there, Shawn Michaels yeah. Theater. Yeah, it's Shawn Michaels Theater, and it, it killed me. Uh, it, I, I, it, was, it was so dumb because it's like you don't, I, you don't actually believe for a second that they're going to just like decide that this match isn't worth it anymore, man, and hug it out and become a team and then just lose by double count out. I thought they might they're brothers. become a team after this, after this match, but not with this finish. Uh, this stunk and it took 10 minutes or 11 minutes to get there. And I just, I didn't understand it. I thought they could have had a banger of a match and they chose to have a story match instead. And just, it was disappointing to me. I, I don't think it got Jay to where he needs to be, which mm. is like, like Though you had Cole at the end of the match, and I'll give him credit, he had actually a great show both nights. I thought he did some really nice calls. Yeah, no, Michael Cole was really good. McAfee, on the other hand. (laughs) All over the place? Yes. But damn if he isn't entertaining. When when he is excited and engaged and being like almost the Chris Farley fan, like, oh, what's that, Michael Cole? You know, or he's like when he's the inquisitive child, he's great. And when and there are times when he knows he's causing a little bit of trouble where he's also great. But there were times on this night one where he was just, he hadn't been paying attention to the, the, the product all that much. And he was just dreadful. Um, but Michael Cole was fantastic to get back to your point. Yeah, no, he, he Cole just had a really nice show on both nights. And I thought at the end of this match, the J, Jimmy and Jay thing, look, he did the best he could with it, which was, he explained that Jay Uso needed to be Jimmy Uso because Jimmy had been costing him all these different title matches. And that is that is the best story that they have there. And they at least told it somewhat. But I thought that it needed to be told better and more in the ring um, by Jay, not by Michael Cole. Jade Cargo. I, oh, go ahead. No, I, I mean, Jay should have been screaming at Jimmy like, I should have been champion. But like, like, like this match really should have been Jay's catharsis of thinking about all the times where like he could have beaten Roman. He could have beaten Gunther. Uh, there's a bunch of different people he could have beaten. And now, of course, you know, like, man, no. you know but what? Like, I want to hear that, though. I want to hear that in the build. I don't want to hear that in the middle of the match. I'm with you on this too, but at least I I, I want to hear it coming from Jay and not Jim or not Michael Cole. Yeah, Though I my, thought Michael uh, Cole did a good job. Also, my problem with the Bailey EO match was that was just the moment that they quickly got past was like, you were never my friend, EO. Bailey, I'm your friend. You know, like, it's like uh, uh, EO cracks me up in so many I, ways. I'll talk I, about I, that I, later. I, I mean, having EO do the melodrama stuff, how did you why did we think that was gonna. Well, we quickly got past it with a punch in the face. So we'll we'll get to it. Yeah. When we get to that match. Uh, no, Jade, I know, but yeah. Jade Cargo, Bianca Belair, and Naomi beat Damage Control of Dakota Kai, Asuka, and Kyrie Sane. Kind of went how we thought. Dakota, Asuka, and Kyrie are just feeding them and and making them look like a million bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sami Zayn beat Gunther. 
fantastic match. Just everything about the the whole interplay of the, of the kid and and mom being backstage, kid not playing ball with the live tape, which I howl at. Uh, I always love that. I l- always love when kids and animals go off script and ruin things. But uh, you know, a little of the mellow WWE melodrama that's to be expected, where you know Gunther stops the match and starts yelling at the wife who's in the front row, the crying wife in the front row. Uh, Sammy. Well, Spire- but that's 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 also part of Rocky too. Yes, it is. Yeah, right. You know, like you, you, I mean, look, they're, they're they're doing Rocky. So Sammy's wife's coming out here doing her Talia Shire tribute. Yes, yes, very, and she was very good doing. No, it. she was really good at it. Yeah, no, she knew exactly what she needed to do there. Um, I loved Sammy's fire up from the mat. It looked weird at first, and then you're just like, okay, I'm into this, and you're just watching Gunther. Oh my god, what am I gonna do with this guy? Look, I I want Gunther to get elevated into this main title picture because he's just so fantastic. Uh, j- just a fantastic fifteen minute match all the way around. I thought. I don't I, think it's going to be very long before Gunther comes out and power bombs Cody Rhodes. And then the main event of night one, the Bloodline, Rock and Roman Reigns beat Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. I'm going to call him freaking here. Um, uh, uh, forty five minutes, including entrances. Um, right. Well, including entrances. So yes. like I, I refuse to count entrances in match length, like, because <laughs> no, because it's, it, it becomes disproportional, uh, when you're comparing other shows, for example, right. Um, the actual match was about 20 something minutes because they did 17 minutes of introductions here. Yes. L- literally. And, and they were excellent. The presentation of them was wonderful. Yes, the but, but, that, but that's not that's not nine. rest. I'm not going to count that as match time. Is what I'm saying. No, so it's no, like that, a, no, that, people, that's... people I, I've heard is like the Rock's second longest match ever. No, he had like a 22 minute match here. Uh, you know, it, was well, it was great. Yeah, he was, I, I thought it was it was really entertaining. It went where you thought it was going to go. Uh, the Rock is just so wonderful. Can, can I? Can I? I want to talk about the Rock a little bit because okay. I, my favorite thing about the final boss character. And this will be no surprise to to anybody because it's the final because it's one of the best things too. It's just how profane he is. Yes, just f bombs, s bombs, mother effers all over. It's it's like when when you do like low level improv or short form improv. It it's what people do when you tell them do something in the style of David Mamet or do something like you have Tourette's. It's just, it, it, it has nothing to do with the actual styles. It's just, they're just going to say a lot of swear words. That's all Rock does is he just, when he's walking down the aisle, even it's just mother effer. I'm going to F you up. F, 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 S, F. <laughs> I, just, I, I love it. Just be, no, it's it's so, I think it's super entertaining. Too, oh, I do too. Like, I love no, it. No, you have, you have that. And it's being juxtaposed against like, I am on the board. I am a great movie star. <laughs> I am a respectable guy. I am and corporate. It, and, yeah, and, yeah, I, I am corporate. <laughs> The second he comes out the curtain or does anything as a wrestler, it's like the most not corporate stuff in the world. <laughs> it's I, this character is one of the most entertaining Dwayne Johnson characters he's ever come up It's with. the most for me. Uh, yeah. I, I like it, no, more than Strudel. It, and... Yeah. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, yeah, maybe one of the very early, when he was still heel, like that for very early phase, but yeah, no, like I, he, he's so good as this, this, Actually, uh, it, cor- corporate rock might be my favorite. Where it's like, what? Rock thinks you should fire him. <laughs> Just yeah, okay, that was pretty good. But uh, yeah, that's at the table for night two, which to me, possibly the best one night of WrestleMania. I'll put it up against night one from last year. I'll put it up. I won't, you know, look. I won't say it's the best because for me, seventeen is still the best. For others, maybe thirty is the best. Uh, but um. Just a fun, fun night of wrestling. Uh, starting with Drew McIntyre versus Seth friggin' Rollins for the World Heavyweight title. Best part of this was Punk on Punk on commentary right at the end of the Seth Rollins. What would you call this? The <laughs> the Mardi Gras line for him when he was coming out his entrance. Oh, uh, what did he say? Oh no, no. Oh, here's what he says. He he said. Uh, he said, uh, looks like a bunch of mummers. Uh, Prince Carice was also a mummer. 
That is a Smoky Mountain Wrestling reference from 1994 about the character Prince Karis, who is a giant mummy. <laughs> and I held. I'm like, five people will get that joke, punk. But I appreciate uh, now it. Now you've explained it to me like that's like ringing a vague bell about Prince Karis. Yes. Yeah, no. Um, James Mitchell as uh, Daryl Van Horn was his uh, what was his manager. And I just remember on on his uh, on his debut or his second match, one of the great lines in commentary because he came on commentary to talk about it. You know, it's just the giant mummy character can't move for crap. It's interesting. <laughs> it was, well, it's like my good friend Peter North told me when you're huge, who needs technique? I'm like that that showed up on a professional wrestling show in 1994. I liked how Seth's costume changes seem to actually have some sort of narrative coherence to his mindset now, like him turning back into Shield Seth or whatever. They actually used it in a way where yes. it was telling a story um and that he's doing this almost at like this whole weird wearing strange clothing thing that he's been doing for two and a half years is essentially what it would be like if you had a friend who was doing this. It's an identity <laughs> crisis. No, I, I like it. Um, he's okay. So he's still successful. Uh, and you can have an identity crisis and have a crisis of the self and also still be enjoying success at the same time. Uh, I, I like it. it that, that part of what he is working through with his engagements with Roman um, and that Roman still has not been able to let go himself, which they've also revisited here, is that like this shield breakup really like kind of, you know, scarred them both and that they've never fully healed from the breakup of the shield. I'd, I'd say a good match. I wouldn't say a great match. Drew outstanding here. And then, of course, uh... Uh, it was so entertaining. As, yes. I, as I said earlier in the show, I just thought it was a complete completely entertaining piece of business. I was pleasantly surprised with the twists and turns of like McIntyre wins the title and then he screws himself out of the title. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't see that. Coming. The, the whole interplay between him and punk was fantastic. Punk blowing a wife to drew or blowing a kiss to Drew's wife or girlfriend. Was fantastic after screwing him. Of course, Damien priest comes down, cashes in. There's no, the, are you sure you want to cash in Damien priest? No, they just did it. Thank God. One move, one, two, three. Um, I did like the little touch though, before the cash in after the match where Seth Rollins kind of gives, you know, the nod to drew saying, take care of the title, et cetera, et cetera. You know, as, as kind of like a professional courtesy as if they're going to try and make this the workman's title, but then they do the cash in, which is, funny in its own right isn't right it? no no it's it's a good it's a good bait and switch where I, they really they really sold you on this idea that drew you know ultimately was able to prevail the yes. bad guy wins yeah, uh, no. and, and that, it, but like <laughs> he instead gets hoisted by his own petard uh, and then a match that was not only off the rails but off the wagon as well the pride bobby lashley angelo dawkins montez ford would be fab <laughs> beat the final testament carrying cross Occam razor with Scarlett and Paul Ellering by pinfall Snoop Dogg came out to do commentary and it was just nothing but weed jokes booze jokes oh my Snoop doesn't watch the product so he doesn't know who the hell these people are for the most part and he's just like oh my god look at that I remember and then he like would drop some like Bubba Ray Dudley or Dudley's reference or because he watched them smash with the tables you know, be fab and scratch. Oh, that's my girl. <laughs> so McAfee's over there trying to get him to say the N word. I think Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the most white guy moment that Pat McAfee has ever had in his life is sitting next to Snoop Dogg and trying to coax him to say the N word. Like, <laughs> yeah, say it, Snoop say the word, say the word, say the word. I want to hear it. Like, geez, Louise. Yeah, Snoop Dogg. There's no. some words I can't say on here. No, you can say it. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, no, I, seriously, though, like one of the most cringe moments that McAfee has had on commentary in his entire tenure Th in the this company. This was a low point of the show, but he got better as he uh, as uh, as the well, night went on. You would have to. Well, the only way he could get worse is by actually saying the N word. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Norm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the real problem was no. Um, LA Knight beat AJ Styles in what I've come to expect as a WWE style WrestleMania match. I mean, it did not offend me. 
It wasn't bad. It wasn't great either. No, and it doesn't give you big hope that L.A. Knight's going anywhere. Uh, the crowd reaction was great for him, though. I know, but it just... It, in a dynamic where you have Sami Zayn as uh, Intercontinental Champion, you have Damian Priest, who is not really a heel, as your world champion. I mean, he is, but he isn't. Uh, like, they, the fans like him too much. And then you have Cody Rhodes as, you know, the champion. Well, where does L.A. Knight fit in? He seems to me to be like a guy who needs to be in a title picture to be anything. L.A. Knight will get better with this crowd as soon as The Rock leaves. I mean, well, he's, he's 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 that guy. He's the guy, okay, I can get the crowd fired up with a promo. He's the promo guy, but he's not as good as The Rock on promos. But once The Rock leaves, then there's really nobody good on promos other than really Kevin Owens for the most part. Well, yeah, I mean, L.A. Knight's not even doing a cover of the good version of The Rock. It's no, that's true. Hey, he's come out he, mother he's covering, like, yeah, he's like covering the wrong, the wrong albums. Uh, Logan Paul beat Kevin Owens and Randy Orton for the uh, United States Championship. I, I really liked this match a lot. Logan Paul still continues to amaze me. I, I don't care if you don't like him as a human being. As a wrestler, this is his element. Jerk heel, doing amazing things. Uh, I can yeah, do he's... without his friends. I can do without his friends being part of the gig. Although Randy Orton just beat the crap out of his I Show Speed Kid. <laughs> I love late late stage comedy. The, the only the only thing I like about the friends is watching Randy Orton beat the shit out of him. Yeah, because uh, it seems like Randy Orton really enjoyed that job. I was n I wasn't a huge Orton fan at his peak. I understood he was very, you know, he was very athletic and all that other stuff, but I always found him kind of droll and kind of, you know, going through the motions and uh okay. Oh, let let I mean, 2013. Let's not forget where the overall consensus opinion on Randy Orton's work was. Like at 2013-2014, we were getting boring chants at Randy on a yes. constant basis to the point where Randy was getting so irritated by it in his title matches that he would do things to make matches deliberately more boring. Um, like the rest holes and stuff. That's and that said, was a, that was a byproduct of years of build. And so then that said, old man, Orton comedy, old man, Orton. I love <laughs> when he, just the first time when it's like, Owens and Orton now have to go at it because Orton tried to pull an RKO on Owens. It's like, is it time now? Do we have to do it? The whole thing with the golf cart where he's telling Kevin Owens to slow down because his <laughs> old man comedy Orton kind of playing off of how big of a star he used to be entertains me to no end, Chris. Yes. I, <laughs> I like his character. I, I think I even think with he, Riddle, who's a piece of garbage, I, I that interplay it was always really he's playing straight man to this this absolute doofus. So yeah. right, no, he was entertaining as that. I, I think both Orton and Cena have now found themselves very comfortable veteran roles where they're not going to be stepping on toes and they can still do something really Im interesting and meaningful to the card and really bring something to whatever match they're in. Aunt Pam defeated EO Sky. Oh, Chris, the smile on my face after this match. Look, I am a Bailey fanatic. I think Bailey is the best bell to bell women's wrestler WD WWE has probably had. Um, no, no offense to anybody else in terms of building blocks, in terms of that. The reason why I loved this match so much, Chris, is it was the simplicity of it. We didn't have a lot of high spots or anything like that. EO got to be EO for the first time since NXT, which was great. But Bailey, Bailey got this crowd invested by selling a knee to the point where I was worried after that first dive where she came up a little bit limping. I thought, okay, she's hurt one of her legs again. Let, let's see what happens here. But no, she was selling. And she continued to sell. And she continued to do a Ricky Morton type of sell 
where it's like she's coming back and and EO's just beating on her and beating on her and doing high spots and doing the three moonsaults and stuff like that. And here she comes. The rose plant is not a good move. She should probably have won with Bailey to belly now that she's a baby face. But to me, this match was the best women's match on, on, on either night. And I thought she did great. I thought EO looked spectacular here. There was no shenanigans from damage control at all, which really helped it be a nice one-on-one match. And afterwards, uh, Bailey and and Sasha had a bit of a posse of young women in terms of coming up in the business who were super fans. So she's at the press conference and she's wearing a t-shirt of uh, Jada Stone, an indie wrestler who used to make t- used to make uh, custom shoes for her and Sasha. Billy Starks is, is was a big Bailey fan coming up. She won a title over the weekend. You have Roxanne and JC and a few others down at NXT. She has a army of young women working the indies and working NXT that idolized her. I, I was happy she got her moment. I kind of wanted a little bit more. You can't really get that kind of, you know, you, you'll go into it. I, I almost took your point there accidentally, and I apologize. Um, But I was very happy with this match. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I think... You know, you cite some of the people who cite Bailey as an influence, and these are the more quality wrestlers of this generation, especially in the WWE class. JC Jane and Roxanne Perez are both fantastic. I mean, obviously, Punk, Roxanne Punk, is Punk and Charlotte put her over big during a th- during a uh, stand up with I think ESPN. I, I, I it was that, but I mean, both Charlotte and 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 CM Punk were like, look, she is. She's the rock of this division. And and I don't mean the wrestler of the rock. I mean, like the foundation of this division. And she finally got her moment. So, yeah, I mean, everybody, I have, I don't know anybody who may say a bad word about her. Maybe Alexa Bliss, but <laughs> go on. Yeah. Um. What was my other point going to be? You tell me. Oh, you said you can't get the kind of uh, pre-show you were telling me about oh, the difference between pre-show. NXT. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. I was like, wait, I was about to say something. Yeah. And that was like two hours ago now. Yeah, I, it's back. It's back. So I think the problem for this type of match, and especially for people who want these matches to be like elevated to that, you know, five star or whatever. Tokyo Dome, Dave Meltzer special. Yeah, big Tokyo Dome vibes here, uh, that sort of thing. So like people who want that, especially out of WWE, the – the only product that they've ever had that's really been able to give you that like mini Tokyo Dome sort of vibe was the black and gold old school NXT. And you can still sort of see that even with this current NXT's presentation in flashes, bits, you know, little spurts and that sort of thing. There's something about the level of intimacy um, that you need, especially for a story like this to really get off the ground. It doesn't, for me, work as a in front of 80,000 people sort of story. Um, so it, it, in a way, it's like, why did the match not quite meet some people's you know expectations or whatever? Um, I, I think part of it is that it's the wrong band for the wrong venue sort of thing. Uh, one thing I, <laughs> I alluded to it earlier, but something that always cracks me up is uh, whenever EO does the yell type of thing, like, ah! <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I howl at that every time. She's uh, uh, the angry yell type of growling type thing that she does when she's kind of staggering. I, I find her staggering around thing kind of weird at times because she's still doing it. But like she did all the way down the the ramp as well. But it's like when she's like, Bailey, you're mine. Ah! <laughs> like, yes, EO. Yes, you're so cute. <laughs> now, now go up on the top rope and do a moonsault kind of a thing uh but yeah and then and then the main event which look this russ i didn't understand okay here's here's where the the people who watch love aew and and new japan and stuff were like oh it was nice of you to get an evil match on 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 or a house of torture match as your main event for wrestlemania all the run-ins and stuff this is what wrestlemania does this is the spectacle of wwe they they literally told you you're getting a lot of run-ins in this match 
and they did it. They, they told you, they told you who was going to win this match yes. with the teaser package for uh, the DVD or the interview backstage segment thing. Like they, they tipped the hand on what this match was going to be entirely. Uh, the the show is about the blo- is about the tag match enabling the bloodline rules match, and I, I can totally understand for people like that's not necessarily the main event they want, but like we've already seen Cody and you Roman. You weren't going to get a pure wrestling technical they already clinic. Did that. They already did that long match, right? They already had that match. This is finishing a story. Like they, it's right there in the tagline. They're, <laughs> they're not, straight up. Like they, I don't, I don't fault them for not having this like banger match because they told a story in two parts over two nights. And you got the member berries. You got the rock. You got John Cena. Well, you got John Cena. He comes down and then he does his thing. And then the rocks music hit. Cena has look of fear of God. And all rock is doing is cussing all the way down. <laughs> and then you get under, you get undertaker, undertaker and like you get Seth Rollins trying to shield. make his- as yeah. the shield trying to make his way down and like that that roman spear on seth was brutal oh it was uh, brutal but, it was I, 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 but i'll tell you what no it, it got me totally amped for the next roman seth rollins match like i i'm so that i am in the house for that one already and i liked the follow-up <laughs> on raw the next night just to kind of complete all of our wwe talk i thought uh i thought rock, rock was so weirdly understated that he was far more compelling Yes. Being quiet rock. And you're just kind of like watching going, oh man, here it's kind of like, you know, Flair would do this too, where he'd be very quiet and, and, and intense. And you're like, and then he'd get, and then he'd moved to being shouty and stuff. This one was the rock being in control the entire time being, yeah, Cody, can I hold that belt? Great. I'm coming back for it. And I am your boss. You know, that kind of thing. Kind of like just, the, the it, menace. It just feels right. No, like when he held yeah. it up and he's like, this just feels right. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, like that was so good. Getting a, this is awkward chant was, <laughs> was lovely. I, I thought that that meant that they did good business there. Cause one, I don't know that I've heard of this is awkward chant yet. I might be wrong on that, but two, um, I, I think that it means that the crowd's really onto the energy that the rock was throwing down there. Um, yeah. and I, I completely agree. I thought it was one lovely final act, uh, in this chapter of the final boss, which I, I, as we've discussed, sets up everything that we thought they would for next time sets up I, rock and Roman, Roman sets up rock yep, and Roman, Cody. Cody and yep. That's all you want out of something. Yes. That, and, that's that's the big thing for me is that like everything everything is all there they've explained everything it doesn't matter what the rock handed to it could have been a bone from dusty Rhodes' body it doesn't actually matter it's a mcguffin uh because it could be anything yeah um it's interesting because it was reported by dave that uh after the match and after he came through the curtain cody got the actual rolex that dusty pawned to send um to send Cody and his sister out to LA to take acting lessons and to make it big. Don't know don't know if that's true or not, but uh my th- you know, so everybody's thinking it's the watch that they gave him, everybody in the know. I would love to it to be the smashed up watch. <laughs> he goes, you know what that is without even opening your hand, don't you? And so so it's something to say, yeah, F you cody and then he leaves uh but yeah it's a mcguffin and it's great uh i've seen other people saying part of the tribal chief's necklace you know kind of thing saying you're the tribal chief now sort of thing it sets up future stories it was fine it, it doesn't matter they can and, and what they'll they'll decide at a later point what it was too let's be really clear they can have an idea of what it was on monday and that can completely change because they never showed the hand Okay, I need you to do me a favor. I need you what? to pull up the lineup of AEW Dynamite from this last week. Okay. Because we are going to go into AEW Dynamite because as soon as, you know, all the in the midst of all this goodwill towards WWE, Tony Khan tweets out a graphic where the Young Bucks will present the the actual footage from All In of the fight between Jack Perry and CM Punk, and they will address it on their show. And everybody's kind of going, is this a bit? Are the Bucks going to do something kind of ironic? Is this a way to, um, 
Is this a way to 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 you know? Well, uh, they did it. They bring didn't back Perry? do something ironic. Uh, not what they meant, but, no, yeah, but yeah, irony uh, did occur. And then, and then we're told, no, they're gonna they're gonna set out the real footage. And that was their marketing point, mostly, for this dynamite. Other than, um, you know, Joe and Dustin, which is an interesting choice given that this is Cody's big week. Copeland and Penta, and and Tony Storm doing a champagne toast to Thunder Rosa. Now, we'll start just at the beginning. Your top three big free agents. Will Ospreay, Mercedes Monet, uh, Okada are all on this show. And they weren't really advertised as the focal points of your show, which to me is kind of a mistake. (laughs) Especially if if you're going to be going after WWE, which this show... If you're a petty fan, and we know a lot of AEW fans wanted to be petty when the, when they were on the upswing, they got their pettiness this week, Chris. Um, where do we do we want to go in order here? I guess. Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, Joe hopefully. and Dustin, Joe and Dustin, you come out and and Swerve jumps Joe, so that gets the uh, that that gets them off the board. And yeah, the, this... the whole the original planned card here, right, was just to tell everyone before we, because this is this is part of the wraparound story of the show. Is we had a planned show, but things are so crazy over here that like anything can happen. It was supposed to be <laughs> some. That Samoa... goes to another point. Things are so crazy and they're off the rails, and that during the Penta and and Copeland match, they had a countdown clock for when the Bucks were gonna have their segment. Which is weird because you wouldn't have had that planned because originally (laughs) you were supposed to have a championship eliminator match between Samoa Joe and Dustin, right? It's uh, whatever. So, like, it was supposed to be the – and then we were supposed to have Mariah May and Anna Jay, too, on this show. But, like, this show stopped. They were on there. Well, actually, that was a pretty decent match between those two. Um, So, Penta and Adam Copeland have a match, and Copeland is Lucha Edge. And it wasn't that bad, but it went no. on for a long time. It was just long. It, yes. I mean, the, the problem with these matches is they're having like these 17, 18 minute matches that don't ever get into a second gear and don't need to be this long. They don't elevate uh, any emotion in there. No, it's like it was very I, it, weird. It, it's it's just a weird usage of Copeland too, because it's like you know the guy does have a lot of miles on his car. I, I I just don't understand having him go twenty minutes to show what he can have a completely entertaining ten minute match. And then we had uh, what, what we had the the promo with the the six men right, and then then we go backstage to the yeah, Bucks. and then we went backstage to the Bucks, who. <laughs> Man, All right, here's that, the here's the part of the show everyone's been waiting for. Okay. So on paper, your your theory is we're gonna take this real event and we're gonna bring it into the kayfabe world to help not, our company do better business. Yes. And that's because important. Gonna, I want to circle back to that too. But but also the real reason we're doing this is we're gonna show you that Punk was really the bad guy here, and we're gonna trash him. So they show this footage um, under the pretense of this whole event was on our big day as EVPs, and then it threw us off so much that FTR, his buddies, beat us in the match at All In. Okay. So they show so it's got, this. It's got, it, I mean, just based off of that, kayfabe wise, it's got to be pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, I mean, wrestling is typically a pretty civil place. So, like, I, I, this this is the part that kills me, right? I, I'm going to drop the joke here. CM Punk shoves Jack Perry, and I'm supposed to believe that two wrestlers have never seen a man shove another man when every contract signing that happens in this company <laughs> results in somebody going through an effing table? Yeah, um... Then they like, show the footage. Problem one. Well, see, I'm, problem I'm, I'm, I'm still getting over the fact that they're trying to use this fight as an excuse for losing the match. They're, right. they're blurring that line. Right. Why just... would that affect? No, that's what I mean. If, if like the level of violence in kayfabe that okay. these wrestlers are used to 
is like way beyond I shoved you because I'm mad at you. People do that shit all the time in this company. All right, punk. Here, here, here's the ba- if you if you're living under a rock and you never and you didn't see the footage. Here's the deal. Punk goes backstage, and he, or he's in the gorilla, and he's talking to Perry. And Perry's playing with his hair and kind of like, oh, I don't have a problem, whatever, etc. Punk is getting a bit tired of old Gen Z Jungle Boy, or maybe even Gen Y at this point, Millennial Jungle Boy, not taking Punk super seriously. So Punk high faces him slash punches him. Perry goes in for a for a, for a leg and he gets gets kind of uh, he gets in a headlock and right. Joe, and Joe tears uh, Joe Joe comes over immediately pulls him off. Punk goes right behind the monitors and yells something at Tony Khan and storms off with Alistair or Malachi Alistair Malachi Black in and tow. Chris Hero. Chris Hero's going. Oh my God! What the heck's happening? Our boy Mookie is back there giving a tour to, I think, friends of one of the people in the match. They, yes, this is a backstage area. And all of a sudden, a fight breaks out. And he's like, let's move along on the tour right now. Um, My thought was, Chris, somebody got fired over this? Really? I, 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 it, I Again, <laughs> like even outside of the world of kayfabe, it's a wrestling company. Like we know how these wrestlers are. Uh, and... They they do have these sort of scuffles. Um, my my thought. I've seen worse after w- on a set of a Hollywood project where the producer and the director then later hugged it out the next day and said, "We're so sorry for all you guys having to see this, et cetera, et cetera." Nope, we're we're going to HR on this one. Uh, right. <laughs> I I just I have a big problem with that. Um, you know, just given the general dynamic of wrestling locker rooms. Uh, second. Uh, I, my big takeaway, or I, I mean, my primary takeaway here is that Tony Khan, the whole narrative that he is a bad leader, that he is a bad manager, it is never more evident to me than this guy hiding behind a piece of cloth, pretending that a fight isn't happening six feet in front of him on the other side of that cloth, or maybe even three or four feet in front of him on the other side of that cloth. And that fight is happening. Because if we're going to believe Phil Brooks here, and I mean, so far, I thought this videographic evidence is supposed to be a stirring rebuttal of everything he said. And I'm not seeing that in this videotape. I see a few things that are not consistent, but it seems to me like a lot of stuff is consistent with Brooks's story. Um, it, it seems like, and then believing Brooks on this, he asked Khan to deal with this, that Tony Schiavone had wanted brooks to go and have a talk with jack perry about blading and some of the other stuff that he was doing in the matches and punk said to Khan, you need to handle this or i will i don't really want to have to handle this and then all of a sudden after Khan demurred and decided not to handle it it is now being handled in front of him before his very eyes and he shrinks behind his little piece of cloth And then at the end of the interaction, the way I read it is Brooks runs up to the piece of cloth, leans over it, and is looking down at Tony Khan. It's basically saying, this is your fault. You need to do something, yeah. Yeah, you didn't do anything about that. That's why this effing happened. I didn't think Khan was in any danger of his life. Uh, I didn't think he was. I didn't even think he was in real danger of physical harm. Neither did I. I, 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 No, I, I read that. I mean... If I had been in that interaction and I had been there, I would have been screaming at Tony Khan, like, this happened because you didn't do your job. Uh, like, this is your effing fault. But I wouldn't have been like, this is your effing fault. Punch, 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 punch. And I don't think that's what Brooks is trying to do yeah, either. If, if Tony and, had gone out there to break up the fight, I might have thought, you know, okay, maybe he thought he was in a little bit of physical danger, well, even that though there wasn't it, much of a fight. Right. Okay, look, uh, I, Tony Khan tried to go up and break apart an MMA fighter, I don't care if that MMA fighter is Phil Brooks, is still like a big, big ask for a small man. Okay. So I, I'm willing, I'm will, I would be willing to grant that if he had done that, that that would have been ballsy and actually been a legitimate reason for him to believe that his physical safety was slightly imperiled. But he did not do that. He chose to hide behind his piece of cloth. <laughs> 
not not a monitor, a piece of cloth. Okay. There, well, the, no, because there's the monitor, yeah. and then there's a little piece of cloth, and nothing is nothing is real on the other side of the piece of cloth. The only thing that's real is what's on your side of the piece of cloth. Everything else on the other side's your imagination. And then we get Will Osprey, who is either encouraged or champing at the bit by management to come out. And cut oh, how promo. do you not look at this show as clearly being greenlit by con or management? Oh, from, I, from I do. Samoa Joe to from the Samoan beating the roads all the way down. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm sorry. Like, you know, there's too many coincidences for them to all be coincidences. I, I agree. Uh, up, up next is Will Osprey, who I also think was a little gotten to. And look, no way. Uh, well, I mean. <laughs> Triple H goes on Pat McAfee's show. And he basically says that they basically ask about these big free agents that AEW has gotten. And he basically says, look, there are guys who there's some young guys who haven't proven themselves and they'd rather get the lighter schedule. than then come to WWE, which is a grind. And, and maybe they can't embrace the grind type of a thing. And look, this was a cheap shot by by Triple H in many ways at AEW and its talent and Will Ospreay because basically the, the the thing was AEW offered more money, but they also offered Will Ospreay the chance. He didn't have to move to the States. He could stay in the UK and he could come back and forth and do shows at his leisure. Triple H does this. And I'm not saying it's correct. I, I hate it. I hate the pettiness from number one as much as I hate number two. But number two is always going to be petty. Number one's just going to take shots at them, and and I I get that too. But well, number one like, didn't even take shots at them, right? Like, like that this... was a shot at Osprey. That, well, I mean, no, uh, oh, no, okay, okay, around. okay. So, okay, the the Hunter thing, yes. Um, the rest of this show though was Phil Brooks, an employee of the company number one, um, like getting to company number two so bad that they dedicate an entire episode to yes. him. Yes. And building up a fantastic feud for Jack Perry and CM Punk to eventually have in WWE for a ton of money. Oh, and ratings were up 17% because Punk was the star of this show. That, that's and people were me. chanting for CM Punk at yes. the end of this. Yes. Yeah, so I, this was so short-sighted. Uh, AEW is never going to be able to capitalize on the CM Punk Jack Perry business that they built here. WWE is. Yeah, and so Osprey comes out and basically says that uh, the only grind Triple H had was on on the boss's wife. Okay, great. I mean, I, I get that the people who are AEW tribalists were digging this promo. It, you know, the tone. Uh, was hey, great. these, was these were banger jokes twenty years ago, and they're banger jokes now. That's how it works. Yeah, I just I was like, okay, great, we're onto that. And then we have the six man with Hook. Uh, Chris Jericho and Shibata versus Shane Taylor. Is it productions or promotions? I can't remember, but Shibata takes the pin against Lee Moriarty. Now there's two things wrong with this. Number one commentary is, is hyping. This is the biggest win of Lee Johnson's career, er, Lee Moriarty's career in AEW. But all they're showing is Hook and Jericho bickering at one another. Number two, we just used Shibata to put over our main event at our pay-per-view where where both Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson beat Shibata to make it a quote-unquote big deal that these two would now be facing each other at Dynasty. And, and I think we give... they've invoked like the Okada Shibata interactions too. So nothing makes me more excited to see Shibata finally get back to Okada than uh, watching him take the L to Lee Moriarty. Yeah, and not only that, they're doing a rematch on Collision with Lee Mor a one on one Moriarty versus Shibata. Well, so he'll so probably it might be lose 50, that. 50, 50, yeah, 50 right. 50, 50, 50, yeah. After after putting over on commentary, biggest win of his career, and there's no follow up to it. Okay, great. Moving on, we get the Anna J or no, Anna J is not next. Uh, did we get Mercedes? Never mind. It doesn't matter the order. I'm just gonna say it. The Mercedes Monet interview, where she's obviously reading a teleprompter. Um, all 
I, I'm I, sorry I, if you're gonna pay her this much money, have her memorize a script. My uh, well, my my thing is, I now have to say, my optimism was wrong and my concern was real. That Mercedes and maybe even Jen Pepperman are system people. They're WWE system people, and. Mercedes can't cut a promo outside of the quote-unquote Sasha Banks heel character. She can't talk normally. Might Man, not... if you took away that Sasha Banks heel character, like if she was legally not allowed to still just basically be doing Sasha Banks in substance, she'd have nothing right now. She'd, she'd have so, nothing. She'd I be think you're so correct. damn lost right now. I'm sorry. I agree. I, I know that one's going to hit hard. No, she's but, fantastic. Yeah. She's fantastic in the ring. In the ring, but like as a character, she has no ideas. She's got no ideas. She's living on like it's, the same old riffs. Well, it's it's scared to do something else because this is what you're known for. And I get that too, but I was just like, you have the freedom to do whatever you want. And now we're doing WWE style promos again in in this company, which does not want these. And they may boo her out of the building, to be honest with you. Um, and, and more importantly, in a lot of cases, you know, the, these sort of uh, this sort of character driven, you know, promos, which are not not her strength either. Uh, a lot of cases, she'll be going up against people who are not people who are going to be giving her a whole hell of a lot. Your Deanna Parazzos or your Rehos or whatever. Outside of Tony Storm, you don't have a lot of people who can be the big character foil sort of thing for her. So we get the champagne toast. It's 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 also a little sports entertainment-y. We blind Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa doesn't realize it's it's Tony Storm beating her up and thinks it's Deanna Peraza. All right. Kind of dumb. That leads to Mariah May and Anna Jay, who I thought had a decent match, but then the post-match beatdown by Anna Jay leads to uh, Mina Shirakara uh, coming out, making the save. We're supposed to know who she is because I think she was on a collision and she was on a Ring of Honor and she was on the Ring of Honor pay-per-view. Oh, her music um, hit, she comes down. And you can see by the numbers, people don't miss those shows. Oh, yeah, and nobody responded. And then, uh, and then of course, Excalibur explained she was in Club Venus in stardom in a, in a stable together. And she feeds Mariah another glass of champagne, and they make out. Here's my dilemma here in, in talking about this right now, Chris, because I could very easily go to, this is exploitative like the HLA in the Attitude Era, which it kind of felt like. And I would get pushback from AEW fanatics who would tell me, no, 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 you can have well-written lesbian storylines. Th this, well <laughs> this is not a well-written. This is not well-written. I well, We're just going to stop right there. I don't even touch lesbian storyline. Spare me on this well-written shit. Like, like no, no way. No way. Take a hike. Although, you know, if those two want to make out, I got, I got I'm no not problem. Say, anyway, we can make out with whoever. If, if they're both good city, I don't care who's making out with who. Yes. Uh, especially just, if they're just, cool with me watching. It's just, like, that's doing, not the point here. We're going to do a, we're going to do a love triangle for titillation's sake. And let's just say it's for titillation's sake, as opposed to saying it's well-written stories, please. Um, And then, well, oh, go This ahead. women's divisions, like this, the universe of this women's division is just trash. Come right back, now. Britt Baker. Please? Come, I, 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 she can't make this make sense. I know she can't. No, it's you got Mercedes and then this crap and like none of it. I, I have a hard time even imagining how any of it fits together in a sort of satisfying or intriguing way that I'd want to watch. Um, no, I th this stuff sucks. And then we get the uh, the title eliminator between Dustin and and Joe, which while good, number one, the blood comes way too quick. And it comes accidentally as opposed to Joe being so angry about the pre-match beatdown before by Swerve that he takes it out on Dustin, which should have been the way it did. And maybe even to the point where he gets DQ'd and loses the title eliminator, meaning Dustin gets a title shot later. No, no, no. Instead, it, it becomes a match between Dustin and Joe while Dustin's bleeding. 
chains grab. That's a MacGuffin. He picks up the picks up the um or not a MacGuffin, but he picks up the chain. That's a swerve. He drops it. He hits him with the title belt. One, two, three, just to get swerve back in the match where it's like, okay, great. So we just wanted to give Dustin a title win to say thank you to Cody or uh, a title match to say thank you to Cody or whatever. Uh, I, no, I don't think it was thank you. Oh, you think it was? You think it was a slight burial on Tony's? Part? Yeah. Uh, uh, absolutely, because especially as you just sort of illustrated, with this is an eliminator match. All they had to do was set this up where Dustin wins as sort of a nod to Cody. I thought then, so too. I thought, and, 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 and then it, 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 no, and he doesn't win the title. No. He just wins the eliminator match. Yeah, and it's like yeah, match, and like and then a Joe feel good the- moment where we say yes, we're all in on the success of the Rhodeses across the board. Now, I, I viewed this as a little bit of a as a burial. You yeah. let you let Dustin win this one because because either Joe gets so mad he gets DQ'd, and then you just have him murder death Dustin on the next one to the point where Swerve comes out and saves him before Dynasty on the Go Home show. It's uh, there's so much weird build in this company. I mean, they didn't even really commit to the notion that Dustin really wanted the title right now. No, his well, whole, his whole build is I just have banger matches all the time. Like they, that, it wasn't, it wasn't this like incredible. No, no, no. I think there was, there was a. See, here's the other issue. I think there was a throwaway promo on Rampage where he goes, "You know, I've never held a world title before. I'd really like a chance at one." Kind of a thing. It's like, yeah, well, not everybody watches everything. Show us that promo, please. I would like to see it. But uh, the, the, this whole episode can be encapsulated because I forgot one little thing that wasn't worth talking about, but it was great. It's like Osprey is out there talking about AEW. This is where we wrestle, and this is where wrestling takes place. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. And they cut to the Julia Hart House of Black lore promo, <laughs> and I just went, that's perfect. That's perfection right there. That is that is what, what we're dealing with here. <laughs> it just... I this match or this show felt uneven in so many ways. It, it felt desperate, dude. It, it felt it, it, there was a little une- desperation there beyond was no uneven. No, yeah. this is this is a desperate show. Uh, they they have these stars, Copeland, Okada, Monet, and and you have Okada coming out here and having an enhancement match. Like why, what for, what is the point of this? And, I, the and only then re- you have him go back and do a loosey goosey promo with uh, Kingston and, and, and Briscoe that kind of, because it's being taped live, Copeland misses his line. So they have to actually repeat the whole thing to set up the, the mixed tag match. It looked unprofessional. It was just <sighs> do pre tapes. You I mean, Okada does not feel like a prestige guy. Yeah. Uh, which is so weird because he's Kazuchika Okada. Like, he should feel, or Kazuchika Okada. I, 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 I'm still not used to you saying and I both kazoo. Do that. I'm not used to saying kazoo uh, with this guy. I, I don't I don't like thinking of him as kazoo Okada. Uh, I, I will also say that FTR calling the Young Bucks Rod and Todd made me pop pretty hard. I, I, yeah, except that. Cash looked like the ultimate, like <laughs> something about wearing a Simpson, a grown man wearing a yeah. Simpson shirt. <laughs> I, 1992. I, it really, it, there's an oh, energy Bunga, there. Dude. There's a real, there's a real energy there that is lame, like like lame dad energy. Either lame dad energy or or never really left your house since the nineties <laughs> kind of a shut in. Like, like he could have cut. Yeah. He could have came out there with an old school South park shirt from like 98, like with <laughs> yeah, oh my, like, like Kenny. Oh my God. I, like it's been long enough now, actually. Oh my God. You killed Kenny would actually be kind of cool and ironic, but yeah, no, uh, it, it, it's very much, it had a Golga wearing the South park t-shirts <laughs> kind of energy. Uh, I got. Uh, do you have anything else? Did you that I missed anywhere that you wanted to bring up for anything in the lazy river? I know we kind of went. In no, I, last week. I, yeah, yeah. We like, we we kind of we kind of hit everything. I know we had some follow up stuff, but I didn't see anything like on NXT that beyond uh, the dazzled me or anything. Uh, I thought the debut the, was pretty good. The gymnast kid. 
remind me uh, a lot of the gymnast that they used to have. I forgot his name. Uh, oh, I had it written down here. Let me get it. Oh, up. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they did a nice little job with that. And Stacy Irvin Jr. When they had and, him. I forgot his working name. And then, and then the tag match, obviously. The title match was fun. Um, yeah. And then outside of that, Raw was Raw. Um, you know. We'll leave it there then. Yeah, we'll leave it there. You can follow me on uh, Elon Musk's X, aka Twitter at Crap Game Thirteen. Arcane jokes, arcane references, bad jokes, uh, and and wrestling talk for the most part. Uh, you can follow the show at Shake Them Ropes, all one word. We are part of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. I'll get into that in a sec. You can follow Chris on his Instagram because he only does Instagram. He refuses to come anywhere else, probably because he's smart. At D O C T O R underscore N O V. We are, again, part of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. If you like more, uh, uh, let's say, work rate type talk, plenty of shows for you, including the flagship and um, the Good, the Bad, the Hungy, which is more AEW-centric. I do a show that focuses only on Dynamite over on the Fight Game Media Network. It's called The Dynamite Show. We go live on YouTube about 20 minutes afterwards, myself and Paul Fontaine from F4W. Uh, Chris has other varied interests that he'd like to tell you about now, including his ears. Yeah. Well, my <laughs> ear, I mean, you know about my ear, right? Like my, my yes. right sides. Yes. Yeah, like freaking collapsed in. So I'm getting surgery on that next week. That'll be exciting. Um, I used to teach music lessons. Wait, um, you don't anymore. Well, I, I, I would like to, but my homeowners association has actually said <laughs> that I am not allowed to teach music lessons oh. out of my house. Uh, unless I get express written consent from the board. Uh, I have now, re- I put up $600 worth of soundproofing in the last week here. Uh, and I received another noise violation on a Saturday around 7 p.m. for briefly playing my drums for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe, um, after I'd set up all the soundproofing uh, just to try it out. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I, I still I have played that acoustic guitar. Uh, I look longingly at uh, my musical setup that I, uh, I set up. Uh, and I am enjoying deeply the monkey paws, millennials dream slash nightmare of owning a house that brings you infinite torment. Um, but if you'd like to take some guitar lessons uh, via Zoom or uh, with your acoustic guitar, I am certainly available. Message me on Instagram at D-O-C-T-O-R underscore N-O-V. Help me move out of this hellhole. I'm looking forward to the feud. It's coming. <laughs>